Welcome back here at ABC Action News. We've reported about how vital seagrass is to the Tampa Bay area. They support thousands of marine species, protect our coastlines from storm surge and even improve the air quality. That's right. And while some sections of the Bay Area are thriving, old Tampa Bay is stuck in a cycle of pollution. Old Tampa Bay is the section of the Bay that runs from just south of the Gandy up toward the Courtney Campbell Causeway and north all the way to Safety Harbor. And tonight, ABC Action News reporter Michael Paluska hits the water with scientists to talk solutions to this growing problem. We're here on Old Tampa Bay where things are not looking good when it comes to seagrass. They have the lowest amount of coverage since they started monitoring it in 1988. And now leaders are trying to come up with ways to get projects in the works to clean up this part of the bay. Old Tampa Bay is filled with so much life. Oh, look, a crab. And light. Home to our majestic manatees down to the tiniest baby horseshoe crabs. It is a playground for boaters, anglers, and kids learning to sail. On a windy morning, we launched from the Philippi Park boat ramp in Safety Harbor with Justin Tramble, Executive Director of Tampa Bay Waterkeeper, and Maya Burke, Assistant Director of the Tampa Bay Estuary Program. It's upsetting because we just released the new seagrass numbers, and while we're gaining seagrasses everywhere else in Tampa Bay, Old Tampa Bay lost again another 350 acres. Burke listed the top three sources of nitrogen pollution coming into Old Tampa Bay, putting this section of the bay at a tipping point. The number one source of nitrogen pollution is actually from stormwater runoff. The number two source of nitrogen pollution to Old Tampa Bay is from tailpipes and um, atmospheric deposition. And then the third most important source of nitrogen pollution is from wastewater. The flow of water in and out of Old Tampa Bay is also being blocked by bridges and causeways. And instead of the pollution being able to get flushed out to the Gulf, it becomes trapped. So what do we do? Can we solve this problem in Old Tampa Bay? 100%. We've solved this problem for the rest of Tampa Bay. Many of the local governments have a lot of federal resources here that they need to spend for hurricane recovery, like Pinellas County has a survey out right now of how to spend their $813 million. So residents can communicate their priorities to elected officials, and one of the options that you can select on their survey is infrastructure investments to deal with things like flooding, stormwater, wastewater infrastructure. Biggest worry for you? You know, there's there's not necessarily a big worry. I'll, I'll spin it around, Michael. I think there's hope. I think we we see that there's a lot of parts of Tampa Bay that are doing really, really good. And we've identified one part of Tampa Bay that's not doing really good. So I actually look at it as hope because we've, you know, we've been able to do great work, you know, in Tampa Bay. And now we've got sort of this right in front of us. All is not lost. Burke believes optimism, passion, and love of this place will ultimately prevail. Even when things aren't good in old Tampa Bay, there's a lot to celebrate. You know, whether it's like the birds that we see flying overhead, blue crab, people having fun. You have to choose how you look at things. On Old Tampa Bay with photojournalist Reed Moeller, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.